Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Friday. I know I'm excited it's Friday and I hope you guys are too. And I hope that you guys have wonderful reading plans, family plans, movie plans, whatever you may have, because those are my plans and I am really excited for them. I have to be honest with you. I've been traveling a bit at the end of the week and I'm glad. I'm very glad to be home. Um, I'm coming to you with kind of an exciting video for me because I normally do not do videos where I recommend books um, around sort of a monthly theme or a holiday theme. But if you have been on my channel for a while, one, thank you, you'll notice that this year as I've been hauling books or talking about the books that I have gotten, I had kept saying I have a lot of books that fit October, that have sort of that creepy, spooky feel to it. And so I was going to try to read a bunch of these books in October. And I'm really excited about this entire stack, and I'm super sad that it is nine books long because I know that I won't get to them all. Um, but every one of them sort of touches something that really makes me excited. So as always, get out your pen, your paper, your Goodreads, because I have a feeling one, two, three, four, maybe all nine will wind up on your TBR as well. The other super exciting thing about this is that I'm gonna go from middle grade all the way to adult. So I'm gonna have recommendations for all age groups and all reading types. So let's start with the middle grade novel, and that is Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. Now, you guys may know Catherine Arden. She wrote The Bear and the Nightingale, which is a book I liked very, very much. And I have the two sequels sitting on my shelf in the other room. Um, this is her middle grade novel, Small Spaces. This is the story of Ollie. Ollie has gone some, through some sort of trauma, and she has been escaping into books. And um, one day she finds, sorry, I had to catch to make sure that I was saying something correctly. Um, and she one day finds this woman that she thinks is crazed trying to destroy a book. And she decides to steal that book and winds up reading it. And then, this is all you need. Then one day her school goes on a field trip to a farm. And on that farm, she finds gravestones that have the names of the people about, that she is reading about in her book. Now, the back of the book goes into some more detail. I don't think you need it. I think that is enough to make this a must pick up. I think if you have fans, I think there's a blurb on this book by R.L. Stein. If you have um, young readers in your life that like that kind of stuff, I think this is gonna be perfect for them. If you like that kind of stuff, this is gonna be perfect for you. So that's Small Spaces by Catherine Arden, and it is out now, you can go ahead and get it. Let's go a little bit YA, and you know, I always say zombies have been around a lot lately, so if you're going to catch my attention with a zombie novel, you better do something unique and fun and different. And that's what I think Justina Ireland did with Dread Nation. Now, Dread Nation is a reimagining if the Civil War was interrupted by a zombie apocalypse, and our main character, Jane McKean, is born two days after the apocalypse had started, and she is being trained to be a zombie killer. Um, there, I'm sure there's a lot more that could be said about the plot of the book. I think that's enough. I like a, you know, I like a kick-ass lady. I like a woman who is going to take control. I like the idea of her being trained to do um, the zombie killing and what that's going to mean. Um, I like the reimagining part of the Civil War. I think that is different and unique. So I am I, I, this one is definitely, I am going to read it this month. And that is Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. Now, if you have not file, followed Justina Ireland on Twitter, do it. Because when she comes on and says something, it's worth listening to. I really enjoy her. Now, the next book I'm going to put in this YA section, because that's the part of the uh, store that I picked it up in. Um, but I don't know if it's, I think it's probably Bridges That Gap. And that's The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. And this is the story of Alice. Alice is 17 years old. And her and her mom have always sort of lived a life on the run. And then one day they get noticed that her a reclusive grandmother has passed away and they need to go to her estate and they need to take care of it. Now her grandmother is known for writing these dark fairy tales and one day her mom goes missing and um, Alice is notified that um, by a being that her mother is in the world that her grandmother wrote about. So I think that that is, I really like sort of that whole premise. It has a fairy tale sort of aspect to it. I think this cover is fantastic. Um, and that's The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. And I'm pretty sure this is out in paperback now too. So you can get it in either version, whichever works for you. Um, the next book I'm going to tell you about 
um, is sort of a reimagining of a bunch of different tales put together. And that is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. Now, the main character in this book is Mary Jekyll, who is the daughter of Jekyll of Jekyll and Hyde. And she goes, um, something's happened. She's following her parents' death. She's sort of on an adventure to figure out the mystery of their life. And she's searching for Edward Hyde. And instead of finding Edward Hyde, she finds Edward Hyde's daughter, Diana. Diana. And Diana is like almost feral. She's been raised by nuns. Um, and I know Sherlock Holmes and Watson make appearances in this book. Um, and I, yeah, I've heard really fun stuff about the strange case of The Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. Um, I want, again, these covers. Look at this cover. It's so cool. Um, and I just saw a blurb. Actually, I saw her new book. She, I, she may become someone that I need to just pick up everything she's read, read, written. Um, and I think this one sounds like a fun, slightly different type of October read. And that's, again, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodore Goss. Let's do a little short story collection. And I guess, again, a reimagination of a couple of things. And that's The Merry Spinster, Tales of Everyday Horror by Mallory Ortberg. And this is a retelling of children's tales that you are going to be familiar with. But I'm just gonna, what it says in the blurb is, it's a retelling of traditional children's stories and fairy tales with elements of psychological horror, emotional clarity, and a keen sense of feminist mischief. Um, I want to say that w I want to say my friend Chris read this, but I'm not 100% sure. But I I saw a review of it and it got really a really strong review. And um, yeah, I have been holding on to this one for this month as well. I think this cover is gosh darn creepy. Um, and I love the idea behind all of it. So that's The Merry Spinster by Mallory Ortberg. Um, this book just came out this month, but it seems to fit. Actually, it's coming out this month. It hasn't even come out yet. And that is um, Melneth by Sarah Perry. So right before Halloween, it comes out on October 16th. You can pick it up. Um, and you know, Sarah Perry wrote uh, The Essex Serpent, which I absolutely loved. This book is set in mountain times. Our main character is Helen. She moves from England. She lives in Prague now. She's living a life, uh, a life of research. And then one day her friend Carl discovers this letter that talks about Melmoth, I want to call her Melmoth the Witness, who has traveled through history sort of stealing people. Um, and I think the way it explains it is she persuades people to join her in damnation and timeless um, solitude. So Helen, of course, writes that off, right? Why? Why? Um, but then Carl goes disappearing, and Helen feels like there's something over her shoulder the entire time. So I've heard this book is as creepy as that sounds. Um, um, Melmoth is getting really good reviews from people who like that sort of creepy factor. Um, and if you liked The Essex Serpent, Exis, Exis, uh, the, Exis, the Essex Serpent, I don't know why I was struggling with that word, and you like Sarah Perry, read Melmoth. I think you'll really enjoy it. So there you go, out on October 16th. That's the only one that you have to wait a few days for. Um, this book come out, came out, and I think her new book is out too. Um, and this is The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. Her new book, I think, is called The Corset. Um, and let's just take a look. Take a look at this book real quick. You do this, and then you do this. And, oh. Oh my God, everything about this is it's just gorgeous. Now, The Silent Companion, this is the story of Elsie. Elsie is newly married, newly wed widowed, expecting a child, and she is forced to go to her, her dead husband's country estate. She is not welcome. And it says, from inside her new home is a locked room and beyond its door lies a 200-year-old diary hinting at the house's dark past and deeply unsettling painted wooded figures, a silent companion that bears a striking resemblance to Elsie herself. I want to say that the people that I know have read this said it is creepy. Reading it in the dark at night will creep you out. Um, so there you go. And this cover is creepy. Um, and I think it's out in paperback in the U.S. And her new book, The Corset, I think is out too. I'm not sure if it's out only in the U.K., but I, yeah. But I know you can get The Silent Companion here as well. And so that's Laura Purcell's The Silent Companions. 
The last two books have been out a bit, but my grandmother-in-law um, saw and that I um, hauled this book, read this book, and said that this book was excellent. And this is The Witchfinder Sister by Beth Undertow. This is set in the 1600s, 1645. Um, another story of a young woman who is widowed and pregnant, and she moves back to her hometown where she moves in with her brother. And now her brother has some sort of burn, I believe, on his face. I want to make sure. Uh, yes, cruel burns from a childhood accident. And she was worried that he was going to have a different life. But when she gets back, he's very wealthy. And he has created a niche for himself where he hunts down suspected witches. Now, as you can imagine, it has sort of that are they witches? Aren't they witches? Is her brother really just an awful person who's hunting down innocent people and killing them? Um, and she becomes involved in that. And also she's dealing with the trauma of being a widowed woman and all having a newborn baby on the way. So um, yeah, that's The Witchfinder Sister by Beth Undertow. I think that that sounds like an excellent October read. Last but not least, is um, the the book The Doll Funeral by Kate Hammer. She wrote The Girl in the Red Coat. And when I hauled this book originally, a lot of people had read it and a lot of people have really loved it. Um, this is the story of Ruby, who on her 13th birthday finds out that she's adopted and she is not the child of her adopted parents, which to her is a blessing because they are abusive and she does not care for them. So one day she goes on the run and I'm gonna just read this. Determined to find her real mother and father, she runs away into the woods with nothing but a suitcase in the company of her only true friend, the imaginary shadow boy. There she discovers a group of siblings living by their wits. They take her in, but while they offer the, clo um, offer the closest Ruby's ever had to a family, it's not always clear what's real and what's not, and who's trying to help her and who might be a threat. Told through, blah, told through shifting timelines and the alternate perspective of Ruby, her mother, Anna, and even the shadow boy, the doll funeral is, a, is an amazing breakout follow-up to her debut. So I think that sounds equally as creepy. Um, and that is The Doll Funeral by Kate Hammer. So that's nine books recommended for October Reads. If this is your month, if this is what you wait for, I hope some of these make them on your TBR. Even if it's not, a lot of these books sound really, really good. And I hope you pick up one or two. As always, if you're a return subscriber, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. If you're new to my channel and this is your first video, I hope you like what you saw and I hope you stick around. Until next time, happy reading. I'll talk to you later. Bye.